Okay, this video is for everybody that has a 2013 Dodge Ram. Um, actually, it's not actually a technically a Dodge Ram, it's a Ram. But um, anyway, this video is to show people how to hook up an aftermarket radio. This actually is the S100 radio, uh, available on um, all kinds of websites, eBay, uh, Road Navi, uh, Amazon, there's a bunch of sites. Anyway, this is the S100 replacement radio. It's a direct factory fit for the 2013 Ram. And it comes with... A USB, uh, this is actually in another one that comes with as a gray one. There's another one that's in the uh, that, that comes with as well. It's actually a 3G Wi Fi adapter as well. Uh, the biggest problem everybody seems to be having with a lot of these aftermarket radios, this particular aftermarket one here that, that I'm hooking up, um, is there's no way to hook up the factory USB port to this USB that's on this stereo. The reason being is inside in this right here, inside this, there's a little block. And inside that block, there's an actual circuit board. That is actually the USB media hub that's designed to work with the Uconnect, with the factory stereo in the 2013 Rams. Um, there is a company, um, I did a lot of research, took a while to find it. But there's a company called soundoftristate.com uh, online. And they actually sell this here. This unit right here, this is called a Datalink Maestro U-RAM. It is a RAM Media Hub USB adapter kit. Now, what's in this kit is a direct replacement of the factory USB board so that you can actually hook up an aftermarket radio to this and still utilize your factory connections. Okay, so in the kit, uh, it comes with a brand new circuit board. brand new circuit board with the USB connection as well as the auxiliary connection and it also comes with the instructions on how to actually take your dash apart and hook it up and it comes with the adapter because I know online there are a lot of people that have been trying to buy these adapters trying to hook these up to get them to work with their factory connection but the problem is not the cord the problem is not necessarily the aftermarket radio the issue is the Dodge Uconnect system that they have that utilized in the RAM the Uconnect system has to work with this particular board this board that's down inside this little this little module right here the board will not work with an aftermarket radio USB because it works in correlation with the factory Dodge radios so the only way to correct this issue is not by use of a cord like this it's not the cord, it's actually this. Because you could use this cord here uh, with this particular one. Um, this will actually hook up to your direct connection that's actually coming out of your factory radio. Now, the actual connection is right here. It's actually, this is what it is. This is a mini USB jack is what this is. This is hooked up to your factory radio. There's a lot of people uh, that have shown you how to take these radios and factory stereos and stuff out, but nobody ever really describes exactly what this jack here is. This jack is your mini USB port. This actually goes right all the way up to the console. The issue is not in the cord, it's not in the adapter, it's in the console itself. It's actually the circuit board. So, I'm going to show you how to hook all this up now to actually get this to work. So, considering the fact that I'm already here with this, we take the adapter that comes with the kit, and we plug it directly in, utilizing this to a standard USB. We take the USB from the, from the aftermarket stereo, and we plug it in. Now there is the connection made now, so that this USB now will travel all the way up to this hub media center uh, adapter that's up here inside the center console. So now what we have to do now is, we actually have to remove the center console. So I will just take this right now. I'll just poke this in here for now. And just lay this back up. I will. There are lots of videos online showing you how to remove this, this dash piece. Uh, it uses a T20 uh, Torx bit up here in these two holes here, as well as it utilizes one that's down inside in this little cavity right here. Don't forget to take this one out. If you forget to take this one out, you will break your dash piece trying to take it apart. Okay, so, now, in order to remove the center console, first thing you have to do is lift the center console up. 
Then by pulling straight up on this piece here, this comes right up and comes off completely. It's held in with these clips, so it just pulls directly out. Okay, so we take that off, we lay that aside. Now, if you notice, um, this is basically all one molded piece. Now, to expose the molded piece, you actually pull this down. This comes right out. It has a little collar that's actually part of it that you just pull out and it comes right directly out just like that. Oh, this one's being a little bit difficult but you get your gist, the gist of what it is that has to be removed. Now, of course, this doesn't just pull directly up. So we remove this. Now, if we lift this up, we can actually pull the foam back from it, exposing the block I was telling you about. This is actually this the factory USB block. This is the part that has that little circuit board in it that actually has to be replaced in order to get the aftermarket to work. So we unplug the mini USB adapter and we unplug the wiring harness which controls the actual circuit board. Now you push on these little tabs and by pushing on these little tabs this actually comes out into the front. It's a little bit difficult to get out because the tabs on the top are not that easy to get at. If you put your finger in through here, you can actually push on those top tabs to actually release it. So I will just push this in here and this one. Inside this has the little circuit board. So what we had to do is we had to open this block. Now this block will open without too much fuss. You don't have to worry about damaging it, uh, as long as you're somewhat careful. You can use any kind of a little flat top screwdriver or a knife or anything else. There's little tabs right here. All you have to do is to push these tabs in and pry this out. Okay, so to, re to remove this inner piece, you just take your little knife or a flat top screwdriver, pry it down into the top, like this, very gently, because there is a circuit board in there, which is your factory one, you don't want to damage it. And you just gently, Pry this open, releasing those tabs. There it is. This is the factory circuit board. Right here. This is the factory circuit board that this comes with. So what you have to do to remove this is you actually have to take out these two little screws right here. There's one right here and there's one right here. They are a Phillips screw. So all you do is you take a Phillips screwdriver. Oh, I need a smaller tip. Oh, wrong end. And we just undo these screws. Being very careful not to lose it and not to damage this circuit board because once again if you decide to sell your vehicle and you want to put the factory radio back in keeping your aftermarket radio depending on the type of aftermarket radio that you have you can actually go back in and remove this and you can put the factory one back in now this should just pull clear of that there's the circuit board see this is actually the main circuit board. This is how it all hooks up. So we'll lay that aside and we'll take the new one, which is right here. And all you do is connect it back up the same way that the other one was. See? Just goes back in just like this. You take the screws that it came that came out. They're really tiny. and you screw the circuit board back together. So now we take this and obviously we line this up as to how this sits inside here and 
we take it and we put it back together. And if you notice, there is a little slot in here. This little piece right here, there is a little channel here that this actually has to sit on top of in order to actually slide back in properly. If you don't put it in the right place, it won't lock back in. See? Now, factory lock. So, go ahead now. And we will take this and we'll slip it right back into the dash. Snapping it right back in. We take our wiring harness, we plug our wiring harness in. We take our mini USB, we plug our mini USB back in. And before we put it all back together, we can actually test it. So we turn on the radio. Like I said, the dash is not fully put back together yet, but it's on. <clears throat> okay, so now we have music on this thumb drive. We have the stereo here. So I should be able to take this thumb drive based on all these connections and place it into here. If you notice, they are lit up which is they light up just like your factory one when your stereo is on. And I should be able to plug that in and it should read on the radio. And there it is. USB. USB used with factory connection. If you need any more information on it, by all means, post comments on uh, this page. Uh, and I hope that this helps to um, rectify everything for everybody as to how to keep the factory look in your vehicle. Thanks for your time.